A mum and her two young children leave their flat to sit on the grassy area just outside to have a picnic near the block of flats that they live in. They are sitting enjoying a lovely day with the neighbours. But this lovely day will suddenly turn into a nightmare that will affect this mother for the rest of her life. This is the story of seven-year-old Leonie Darnley. Leonie Darnley, born on the 5th of April 1977, to parents Sylvan Darnley, aged 28, originally from Guyana, and Denise Carberry, aged 24, also originally from Guyana. Sylvan and Denise had separated, and Leonie lived with her mother and two year old baby brother Dennis in Battersea on the Doddington Park estate in a two bed, sixth floor flat at Atkinson House in Battersea. Sylvan and her dad lived at Packington House in Stockwell. Leonie attended John Milton Infant and Junior School on Sleaford Road in Battersea and was said to be a lovely, happy, well-behaved and well-mannered child. On Tuesday the 24th of July 1984, it was a beautiful day and the school holidays and Leonie her mother, her toddler brother Desmond, had gone outside to a grassy area near their flat to join the neighbours in a picnic. All the other neighbourhood children were out as it was the first week of the school summer holidays and they were all having a fun time. Leonie was wearing a red-white checked dress with red plastic sandals on. At around 4pm that afternoon, Denise, Leonie's mother, decided to quickly go inside to change her two-year-old son Desmond's nappy, leaving Leonie outside with the neighbours and playing with the other kids. But upon her return, around 20 minutes later, seven-year-old Leonie was nowhere to be seen. The neighbour said she had been running around and playing with the other kids, but had somehow managed to disappear. The police and Leonie's dad, Sylvan, were called and told about his seven-year-old daughter's disappearance and he came to help search for his missing daughter. Sylvan managed to find a pair of red plastic sandals that belonged to his daughter. The neighbours also joined in the search for the missing seven-year-old and decided to search the block of flats that Leonie lived in since it was believed that that was the last place anyone had remembered seeing her. She had been heading back to her flat, most likely to try and catch up with her mother who had gone in quickly to change her baby brother's nappy. At approximately 10pm, around six hours after Leonie had gone missing, the basement of the block of flats was searched. The basement was used by residents as a storage place for their bikes and prams, but it was also used as a doss house by vagrants, hobos, drunks and glue sniffers and it was in this basement storeroom that the mutilated body of seven-year-old Leonie was found naked and face down on top of a pile of rubbish and hidden under a piece of old carpet. Leonie Darnley was found by neighbour Yvonne Collins who said she lifted up an old carpet and at first I thought it was a ripped up doll then I saw the blood. Leonie's parents had the horrible task of identifying the seven-year-old's body at a mortuary in St George's Hospital. A post-mortem by pathologist Dr Richard Shepherd revealed that she had been stabbed in the back ten times, but this had been after she was dead. She had severe and horrendous internal injuries as the perpetrator had used a pointed sharp stick to sexually assault her. The fatal wound had been a stab mark to the neck which had severed her main carotid archery. Leonie's mother, Denise Carberry, said, when I saw what they had done to her, I broke down and cried. I was in a rage. She was only a baby. I feel empty inside now. 
It is so painful. I just do not believe it has happened. I am still shocked. When questioned, Leonie's father, Sylvan, said, I am not thinking of the man that done this. I'm thinking of my baby. It is too late for us, but no one else must go through what we are suffering. For someone to do this, he must be some kind of maniac. Police told the public that Leonie was a good girl and obedient and not likely to go off with anyone else. So the circumstances make you wonder if it was somebody she knew. Based on this, police handed out Smarties to the local children asking if they know anyone who might be the killer, if there was anyone they saw Leonie leaving with whilst playing, as they believed that Leonie may have known her killer, who was someone who was lurking in the lift of her flats. They also said that it was somebody local with intimate knowledge of the area. Nearly three months later, on the 17th of October, 1984, a 20-year-old man, Patrick Riley, was arrested for the rape of a 15-year-old girl. During the arrest, police discovered in his possession what they deemed to be a sinister rape kit. It was a sports bag containing a knife, a mask, with fake hair attached to it, a ski mask, a claw hammer, an A to Z map, a map of the London underground, a torch, gags and ligatures to bind someone. The rape of the 15-year-old girl happened in Totteridge in North London in a wooded area. The 15-year-old girl had been coming from a dentist appointment and on her way to school when Patrick Riley pounced. He beat her so badly with the claw hammer, she almost lost her womb. After the attack and rape, he ran off, and the 15-year-old girl, even though suffering from severe injuries, managed to stagger to a nearby house for help. The police were called, and the 15-year-old victim gave a description of the man. The description was so good that patrolling officers saw Patrick Riley walking down the road and based on the description given, arrested him. Patrick Riley was described as having a shock of ginger hair. Because of the rape of the 15-year-old girl, Patrick Riley was questioned about Leonie's rape and murder. Also, because during a post-mortem exam, bright ginger hair was found amongst Leonie's dark, coiled afro hair. During the interview, Patrick admitted that he'd come to Battersea to look for work and scavenge. He also admitted to being in the basement of Atkinson House, where Leonie had been found. Because of this, he was arrested and charged with Leonie's murder. Patrick Riley was born in Hammersmith, West London, on August 21st, 1961, to Irish parents, David and Philomena Riley from County Longford, who had moved to North Wales where Patrick was born and then to Hammersmith where he grew up with his three brothers and one sister. Patrick was described as a six foot labourer and a keep fit fanatic and he lived on Ansel Road in Tofnell Park, North London. In December 1985, five months after the murder of Leonie, Patrick Riley was put on trial where he denied the murder. The prosecution claimed that four human hairs similar to that of Patrick Riley's and three fibres from a jacket found at the murder scene linked Patrick Riley to the crime. But DNA was in its infancy in those days and the hairs could only be determined as microscopically similar. And the defence hit back claiming that Patrick Riley had not been seen at the scene of the crime and had cooperated with police. They also claimed that there were other suspects. The trial was adjourned until the 11th of March 1986 where 11 jury members found him not guilty for the rape and murder of seven-year-old Leonie Darnley. After the not guilty verdict, Leonie's mum, Denise, came out of court saying, 
I have no reaction, just shock. It was only after Patrick Riley had been found not guilty of the murder of seven-year-old Leonie Darnley that Patrick's dark criminal past was allowed to be revealed in court the next day. The judge Justice Payne had banned all mention and evidence of his previous crimes at the trial, stating that it was in order for him to be given a fair trial. Patrick was then tried for the rape of the 15-year-old girl which he had already admitted and pled guilty to before he was tried for Leone's murder. During the trial for the rape of the 15-year-old, it was revealed that Patrick Riley had been charged with the rape of four other females, attempted rape and also of a sexual assault of another woman also. On the 17th of August 1984, almost a year before Leone's murder, Patrick Riley had raped a 21-year-old army clerk in an open area in northwest London. Ten days later, on the 27th of August 1984, a young 22-year-old mother was coming home from the Notting Hill Carnival around midnight. She lived in a block of flats in West London. The young mum was cornered in the lift and taken at knife point to the 15th floor where she was raped. A few days later, Patrick Riley attempted to rape a 15-year-old schoolgirl in a wooded area at Kenwood House in North London, but she got away. A few days after this, Patrick went back to Kenwood House on the 4th of September 1984, where he indecently insulted a 42-year-old woman who was on her lunch break. A few days after this, Patrick then cornered a 12-year-old little girl in a lift in a block of flats in northwest London where he forced her by knife point into the deserted rubbish room of the block of flats. He tied her up and indecently assaulted her, then fled when she started to scream. A few weeks after this was when he raped and attacked the 15-year-old schoolgirl that was coming from the dentist with the claw hammer, damaging her room where he was finally caught for his perverted crimes. It was also revealed that witnesses had previously seen him running around the block of flats completely naked and only wearing a hat. A group of teens had seen this and went searching for his clothes and upon finding them, they hid his trousers from him, thinking that it was a prank. But the sinister truth was that Patrick Riley liked to strip totally naked when sexually assaulting women as he did not want to leave behind any forensic evidence. These females were all strangers to him and they were all opportunistic attacks. They all happened in public, in broad daylight and all involved a knife. After Patrick's horrific and appalling crimes were revealed, horror filled the jurors as they realised what kind of man they just let go from the charge of murder and rape. And it's at this point that they probably realise that in all likelihood, they just let a guilty man go free. And that under the double jeopardy laws at the time, which meant that a person could not be tried twice for the same crime. Upon realising this, two female jurors wept and a male juror slumped forward with his head in his hands. Judge Justice Payne told Patrick Riley that he was an appalling danger to the public. He also said, The appalling chain of misery you inflicted on your victims and the manner in which you did it horrifies everyone and calls for severe punishment. Patrick Riley was given three life sentences for rape, five years for attempted rape, five years for indecent assault, and two years for another indecent assault. As Patrick Riley was being led away to prison by five officers, he shouted out to the judge, I am thankful you have given me this. The judge then turned to comfort the jurors who had been crucified in the press for allowing a child murderer and paedophile to go free. The judge told them, you did your duty and you did it well. 
Because of our rule of evidence, you are not allowed to know of the other offences. In terms of the murder of seven-year-old Leonie Darnley charge, the evidence was not particularly strong. Outside the court, Patrick Riley's dad, David Riley, said, He is no son of mine. I wish they would hang him. He doesn't deserve to live for what he has done to those poor girls. Whilst his sister Karen said, If they could put him in an electric chair, I will pull the switch. He has ruined our family. Whilst Patrick's mother, Philomena, said, He deserves to die. Three months after being found not guilty of the murder of seven-year-old Leonie Darnley, Patrick Riley confessed to prison officers to the murder of Leonie. But under the double jeopardy law at the time, he could not be tried again for the same crime. Four years later, in September 1990, Patrick Riley wrote to a newspaper confessing what he'd done to Leonie Darnley, saying that he was so ashamed at what he'd done that he wanted to die. He then slashed his wrists. In the letter, he also wrote that the last thing that seven-year-old Leonie Darnley said was, I want my mummy. In 2005, the double jeopardy law was quashed, meaning that if new evidence came to light, then perpetrators could now be tried again for the same crime that they had previously been found not guilty of. It wasn't until four years after this change in law, in June 2009, 31 years after the acquittal, the Director of Public Prosecutions gave the go-ahead to investigate the murder of Leonie Darnley. Patrick Riley was moved from Broadmoor Hospital, a high-security psychiatric hospital for the country's most disturbed offenders, to the police station for DNA mouth swabs and to be interviewed under caution, to which he replied, No comment. To all questions. A year later, in June 2010, forensic scientist Dr Whittaker compared DNA taken from the cloth that was found around Leonie's neck as well as vaginal swabs where he found DNA belonging to Patrick Riley. Dr Whittaker concluded that Patrick Riley had had direct sexual contact with Leonie Darnley. It would be another five years in May 2015 before Dr. Whittaker's results were looked at again and the tests were redone by another forensic scientist, Mr. Turk, who compared blood samples from red stains found on the red dress Leonie was wearing. Fibres from the jacket Patrick Riley was wearing at the time was found in the blood stains on Leonie's dress and clippings from Leonie's fingernails were also examined which revealed Patrick Riley's DNA under Leonie's nails. Two years after this, in 2017, discussions were made to retry Patrick Riley for the murder of seven-year-old Leonie Darnley. But by then, Patrick Riley had been diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic that could not be cured by any treatment. He had been in Broadmoor Psychiatric Hospital then for 33 years, making him Broadmoor's longest-serving patient. Patrick Riley now regarded himself as a 15-year-old virgin who claimed that he couldn't understand his convictions because of this and he was deemed unfit to plead or to stand trial. The other reason for him being deemed as not fit for trial was because in January 2017, Patrick Riley was diagnosed with malignant esophageal cancer which was deemed inoperable and incurable. He was given one year to live. Nearly seven months later, on the 9th of August 2017, Patrick Riley was transferred to the hospital wing and given palliative care as the cancer had now spread to his pelvis and he was bedbound. Two months later, on the 6th of October 2017, at the age of 56, Patrick Riley died in the same psychiatric hospital he'd spent the last 33 years in.
Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you.